Well, first, first, I want to hear from each of you. What, how did you think it? How do you think it went? And what was the biggest thing you learned? Hey, I'll tell you first what the biggest thing I learned is when people were choosing cards, Elijah, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay, as they were choosing their cards and I took them through the process and I, I wanted them to put their cards on the circle in front of them. But as the rest of the cards were getting cleaned off, people's cards were getting pulled with it. So I did learn from there because Christy looked at me, she goes, I'm just getting, people could just put it on top of their question for now. And then once cards are all cleaned off, then we set them out. So that was one thing that was big for me. <laughs> card <laughs> logistics. Okay. What else? Card, uh, card logistics. Yeah. I think that I, something that's really important is that we remind people it's a safe space. And um, so when we're starting this thing, you know, what is shared here is a safe space and it stays here. So if you want to be vulnerable, you can be vulnerable, but also um, keeping people on track of what they're saying, not to, like kind of uh, defining that process a little bit, like just kind of really helping them hone in because it's easy to get kind of sidetracked. Right. Okay. Um, I really liked the part that like everybody had a chance to introduce themselves. So that was, that was really mm -hmm. nice to have that. Um, introduction of a timeline, like setting the intention that, okay, we're going to be done at 11 o'clock, you know, kind of confirm that so everybody is aware and put out that there, we had one person that had to leave early. So we were conscious of making sure she went first and had that experience. So, Okay, uh, give me another round of uh, something you learned. Wendy, ask those ladies if they could just tone it down just a touch because we're on a conference call. Oh, I can go. Thanks, Wendy. Um, um, okay, another thing for me was if I'm going to facilitate that I really make it, like Sylvia kind of touched on that, is that people don't get off track like one of the ladies got off track, oh, this guy I met in Regina, and I, I kind of brought her back to, we're here right now focused on this, so that's something, because that would happen to me, because I can get off track easy, so that was easy for me to do today, but I know I have to stay aware of it, and as a facilitator, remind people. Yeah, definitely. Christy? Yeah. Put me on the spot. <laughs> You know, I, I love that the variety of questions was different so that you could really see how this process works, kind of no matter what type of question. So you had uh, Rhonda who said it wasn't so much a question, but kind of something that's been floating out there versus that. So I think um, I really liked that. And I really liked how Lori kind of summarized, okay, this was her question what did of these cards you know what stands out to you of everything or nothing i really like that part of the process because i think it helps people who've never been through it excellent Sylvia. yeah um i really liked that we actually had like a plan we had christy's mom who was with us last yeah. week and <laughs> she went through the, the process and you know it's the unknowing from ev from everybody else that they didn't know that she had been there before. So to see her and have her go through that process was really good. And she's really good. She's she's she she's really good. She, <laughs> she just gives us nuggets. Yeah. <laughs> she's a nugget. We're gonna start calling her our nugget. Yeah. 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 I'm gonna give her a nugget. I have one. Well, you'll see you're, yeah. you're going to start to build up this list of the specialists and all their gifts and go, okay, for this, we got to bring in here. And, it, you know, it, anyway, keep, keep going. Lori, what else did you learn? So um, another thing is to make sure that we kind of, we start on time. It was great to have our coffee sponsored today, but I know where there has to be a cost for this. This is so valuable. And we've got to open up our doors to say, we're bringing, we've, we're bringing hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth of value to these people. To ask for 10 or $20 to me is nothing. So that's something that has to shift. And not to be given away, but to bring it back because we want to get some type of foundation, philanthropic foundation going into the future. 
So that's if we look at a vision like that, then we don't have a problem bringing in the money because it's to serve others. Maybe people want to be here and they can't afford it. And we honor them because we have a little abundance amount of money that we can pay for them to come. So I was listening to an audio book of Daniel Pink, and it was um, it just our value, kind of how we do it. But one thing he said in the U.S. is there's companies that have started that are an L3 or a value-based company making a difference. So I told my corporate lawyer and I said, what do we have in Canada that's the same? He goes, I'll, I'll let you know, because I thought that's what we need to identify. So the whole philosophy is um, you are allowed to, you're not a not-for-profit, but you're not a for-profit in the sense that you bring in what you need to to cover the expense and the cost of the people involved. But the purpose is to better the community around you in yeah. what you're doing. So, so I just, when you said that, it just reminded me. So you just fed on what I said. Does everybody feel mm -hmm. that same Absolutely. way? Yeah. yeah. So that's, that is something big. We just haven't determined what that looks like. Like Tom shoes and Bomba socks. I'll buy those on purpose because they're more money, but they give a pair to somebody that's in need of a pair. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Well, we won't talk about business model right now, but that's important that you brought that up. Right now, let's just stick to the learning specifically to this process of what, yeah. what, uh, yeah. this to you next. Hey. I just have to think, I have it in my mind. So just like you said, the business model, the process. No, uh, yeah, no, we're thinking of just this event that happened. Um, I think yeah. we really need to, like you had shared with us before, people aren't necessarily going to want to leave. And I felt like we really missed that opportunity because everyone had it as an hour or whatever in their mind. I think there would have been huge opportunity after and just really enrich the experience of having that 30, 40 minutes because now you've gotten to know people a little bit differently. And the people there probably have a skill set that could enhance what you're doing. And so I think we need to build that into the process so it's not just about doing that, but we're building this community of people that share. So we, we need that two hours, that 20 minutes beforehand. So people, cause people love to chat a little bit and they need that time to get comfortable with each other a little bit, even learn their name or something about them. And then you sit down and do that. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's a good idea. And then you have that time after. Cause we wanted to call this a conversation cafe and what would that look like? So in order to do that, you want people to be able to mingle out. Yeah. Okay. No, that's a good one, Christy. Um, in regards to people's names, I know we had mentioned, you know, do people need name tags? So everybody's sitting around, you know, not everybody remembers names. So a name tag, I think, is important. And uh, a clear and scheduled, like, follow-up, right? I mean, yeah. Christy threw stuff out there, you know, about Lori and, and you, you know, yeah, reaching out or whatever, but well, I think what I, are we bringing? Well, what I had kind of thought is if we recorded each person's kind of session somehow, and then, you know, like, and this would be more on the page, and I took notes, and I'll take digital notes, and then we just send them a little email reminder saying, just wanted to give you some snippets that other people were saying that mm -hmm. we pulled out, do you want to and or I got it recorded on my phone. Right? Yeah, so I, I, yeah. I was thinking something like that. And then yeah. as far as the names, what would be really helpful, because you know a lot of mm -hmm. the people, is when you're asking them to go repeat their, their name, name, just until we get name takes uh, or something, yeah. because I wrote it, because sometimes you, you just them. don't remember. Yeah. But if you said that, if you know them, who's ever facilitating. Yeah. And, I would yeah. De and definitely name have, have name tags. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely yeah. have name tags. You weren't going to get name tags. You were, yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely name tags. I thought we had some from upstairs. Yeah. Well, we probably do somewhere. Yeah. Okay, that's a really good one. Did you greet them at the door? Yeah, Sylvia yeah. did. Yeah. Was there any type of process like saging or like that transition from the outside to the inside? What do you do when you bring them in that door? Well, I mean, they came in, you know, welcomed them, and then we have them register. So we've got their name, address, phone number, email, permission for email. Um, content to be sent to them and permission for pictures and awesome. then signed and dated. Oh, awesome. And permission for video too? Uh, you have to put that on. I don't know if I have video on there or not, but I can. I would put that on there if it isn't. Okay, we'll go find it. And so that's, that's greeting them 
And then um, I sent them to the back because they're in the front. So I sent them to the back of the office or back of the space. Yeah. And um, I said, there's a table with chairs around there. Walk around the table, get a feel and pick, your, pick a spot. Because so I, I would almost like, like I would suggest that the you might think that the social interaction at the beginning is is important, but it's there isn't enough time and it can really like you guys didn't get going until basically yeah, quarter 50. Two. Yeah. So 20, 20 minutes to even start and then you were still explaining at nine. So the first half hour hadn't even started. Right. So yeah. to me, it's like a ritual and you're bringing them in. But part of the ritual is getting silent. And so part, like you might, let's say somebody reaches them at, meets them at the door and you, and you hand them off to somebody who sort of says, greetings, you know, you sit at the table, uh, you're gonna sit in silence until uh, everyone's seated right, until you're ready and you're creating the field, you're creating the expectation and taking them out of the zone that people get into when they're in the chit chat kind of, I just met somebody. And it really changes the field. That's huge because I kind of noticed that it was hard yeah. to get started. So that'll, that'll eliminate it because like from the beginning, you're facilitating them from the beginning. You're saying I'm yeah. your guide and here we go. We're, we're going to take you in and it's not a normal conversation. Right, right. And so That's by the time you're idea. speaking, Lori, like because you're the head facilitator in a sense, you are the guide. But yeah. there's four of you and you're all sort of part of the tetrahedron. You're, you have created a field between the four. So you need a little ritual between the four of you, whether you do it kind of like in football, you huddle, but for you guys, it would just be like set intention. I'm not sure if you did that, but set intention, say a little prayer, come together as a four. That creates yeah. the field you invoke. And then as you're moving around, you just, you're always in that state of awareness where the other three, three are, and you know that, that you, you have a very powerful field when you connect yeah. together, right at the heart level. Yeah, that's a good idea. So even when you take the pause, mm -hmm. like even before that, yeah, it's setting that intention. And then Sylvia is going to lead us in a pause to bring this intention. Well, we did was it more about the four of us around there that we do that before people walk in? Is that what you were saying or both? Oh, I'm, no. The I, well, four I would say I would say both, but definitely before people walk in. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. And that could be key. Because you're, you're basically creating a sacred space. Yeah. Right. And we did a little bit of that outside before we did we, we did get started but um yeah yeah that that's a good intention to do that every single time yeah I, and it'll get stronger and stronger as you add into the ritual um sometimes it's nice to open up the field and you ask each person to pray you know say a little word of what they want to bring in and then you close it but everyone gets a chance everyone feels really good yeah and i love the t-shirts that's awesome you look like a team. And so that's it. Like you really want to come across as a team, the hub core team, right? So you're, you're yeah, uh, yeah. every step along the way, you're, you're like more intention and more. more thanks. Sorry. Thanks to Christy. She, thanks to Christy. She awesome. did all of the t-shirts. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Like on the weekend. Yeah. That's just one day. A girl I worked with was amazing and so appreciative of the business. Wow. Just awesome. Awesome. That really added to the day. So I, I see now our little huddle, like the football players do. We do a huddle before things start. And Christy did yeah. get Sylvia and I, but we didn't bring the team together. Yeah. And you know, Bonnie, because she's a, what did we call her? Nugget. Like she could even sit oh, there quiet I think herself. Any, I think anybody who is facilitating this process. Mm -hmm. Um, so that we're all on the same wavelength or page because it's very powerful when you kind of get grounded or centered around that because it allows you to the same, right? So, you know, we might just feel, okay, this session is really about getting people more involved in the business or this session is growing, whatever it is. And then it helps us pick up on those things as you hear people. Mm -hmm. So Elijah, do you want, we took pictures of each of the individual, like after people left their cards and their questions stayed there. So you know the sheet you gave us with the three cards on it and the remedy? Yeah. Could you do us a sheet? Like the one that you've done for us has choice on it. Could you do one with flow there, synergy, and harmony, just one of each? And then we'll put them. Okay. Then we can just set them. We have them on a clipboard on the chair in the spot. So if it's a if it's synergy, then that card will be a synergy card. 
Okay. We just had people override the choice with the cards that they had. They were so excited to be able to take that with them and to write the one thing they're going to do. Now, wouldn't that be cool if they come back again and then they tell us the one thing they've implemented into their life through this process? Yeah, that's like the idea is like a simple, the simplest process. What's the next step? And just mm -hmm. and take a spell to kind of flush out whatever you got to figure out. And yeah. then just, yeah. it, and you just master that process. Yeah. You can do that with anyone and everyone. Yeah. Um, one other thing, um, and I'm sure you're working on it. I, for some reason, I feel there's going to be a, an opportunity sooner rather than later to have the digital version like you did with your question. Mm -hmm. I, you know, and so if, I, I just feel that as more people are coming in, to not limit them to being here. Yes, we want them to be here, but I just think there'll be more opportunities. So mm -hmm. having that available. You mean like how I was like, kind of like me at the table and having multiple laptops kind of thing? Yeah. Yeah, I well, love yeah, the iPad. Yeah, I, like iPad or like device. But I like that they could pick the question the way you pick the question because then they're still, yeah, it's random but they're still interacting with the process, right? Because I think there's something different if someone pulls your card for you. For sure. So for example, like you would be here like you are, but then when it was your turn, you would do that kind of randomizer thing. I just feel- You would pull a remedy. Like yeah, the remedy. yeah, I feel yeah. like that would be, that's gonna be really important yeah. for us. Yeah. Well, I think, yeah. I mean, so you'll be able to, on your own, you'll be able to use the remedy in zoom and i've done that like you saw i think a couple of days ago but i've done oh. it a few times now where you can invite let's say anyway four to eight two to eight whatever you want i think over eight yeah. is probably getting high but yeah. and then charge and your the ideas are bring together a group as a facilitator take your process you, the same thing it's like you get one question answered and it costs you x amount of money or whatever so you can do it online or you could do it offline or combine the two right yeah. But you're right. You're we're aiming at both. Yeah. Elijah, I was looking for that what you wrote on Facebook about, you know, you and Noah and Rose getting this going or Rosa. Thanks. And I I was just looking for it because I was gonna show it to the ladies so they could see like the okay. remedy thing. Do you want me Where to send it to you that? right now? Yeah. Could you send it? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. I sent him a picture. Mm -hmm. That's a really so good right, idea. right now. It's not, we're waiting for a front page from Hayes and it's art, so you can't kind of rush it a bit. And yeah. the front page is not, copy, it's not copyright in a sense, it's somebody else's stuff, but I like the dragon. Um, so it's not, it's not ready to go to the public. That's kind of like the sign, it's not ready to go to the public yet, but you guys can join and uh, you get five spells at the beginning and then you get one spell a day. Now that's the basic thing, but if you're going now, if you go into the facilitated yeah. training course, then you get unlimited spells. And that's part of yeah. the program I got to work out in terms of the level one facilitator training course I'm working on. Um, but you guys are like the advanced, like you guys are taking the, the reins, you, you're going forward. So I'm, I'm backing you up in terms of uh, now you guys have got me activated because you got a team of four, you're actually doing it. You actually had a team in. So now I get activated to, get, to try to catch up to yeah. all the stuff yeah. you guys need, right? Yeah. And and just kind of while we're talking about that, I don't know if the two of you guys talk, but your time is valuable to us. And we know that this is a, a business in some sense. So think about what that cost is from you. And because we want you to be feel free to charge us for your time or the things that you do, because we really value that. So I, I'm just saying that so it's out of the way and you process it and you figure it out. But we don't anticipate that you're doing this for free because it's a huge asset to us. So just think about that. And just, you know, you're very valuable. What yeah. you offer is valuable to us. Yeah. yeah. Th thanks for bringing it up. And uh, it, we were coming close to that convo of, cause it's just, there's a lot involved here. Um, but you're, you're, pre you're moving me to the point where I really have to get clear about what agreements I want to make. So thank you. For yeah. That. yeah. Yeah. So I just wanted to put that out there. Cause I said to the, the ladies, you know, I think we need to just, we want people to have such an amazingly positive experience with us, that if we can be proactive about the things that might be awkward or different things like that, and that's where I kind of said the safe space or different stuff, 
then it allows people to be free to do what they do well or how they're going to participate in it. And then I think you get a way better experience. And then everything associated with the hub and the visionary hub is just positive. Mm -hmm. Right. And because, mm -hmm. you know, and people are going to get their nose at a joint about different stuff, but at least, you know, it's just there. Are you, are the three of you sort of like full time hub now? Like, or do, do any of you have other jobs you're working on the side kind of thing? Yeah. You have a job on the side? Well, I'm a mortgage broker, so it kind of flows it as it comes in, but my okay. time is my own. So my only difference is I live in Regina. So when I come out, I stay at the farm when I'm out here and stuff. At okay. Bonnie. Yeah. So, so it's just a matter of, and that's what's on my agenda tomorrow with the ladies is to say, let's map out what our focus is and what areas we actually want to put out. So if we're here, if we're telling people we're here Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, that we're prepared for people to show up and how we're going to participate, because I just, and that we're giving the same message when we're talking to people about stuff. So that's on our list for tomorrow. Um, but just, because I think it's worse to not be prepared and have it show up, but be prepared so that as people are, are asking or whatever, we're just ready to go. Okay. Yeah, there's I, no I've questions got, asked. And that, yeah, that, so, so, that includes our summer student, Kaylee. So okay. that her message is not going out there unless it's been clarified so that we've got her on the right. She wants to be our little PR person. So we've got to have her on the right page. Another thing too, Elijah, as you're building this this business on your behalf too, because you're our innovator, you're our mapping person, you're our, I, I don't even know, it's just such a big thing. Same thing for you. If you're sitting down and you need brainstorming done, we're all here for you because we've run, we've run businesses. So we understand where you're coming from. And then just like when we get the toolkit and everything, because Laura is doing that toolkit right now, you know, what's the value to that toolkit for someone to say, this is awesome. I want to buy this program because I want to take it home and use it with my family. Yeah. Yeah. So well, we can help you with that as well. Well, I mean, I see you guys as like the first real licensed distributor of the new paradigm toolkit, right? Okay. So okay. the whole thing is is using this process as the methodology to build it and figure out what are the licensing agreements and like what could come to the completion yeah. of getting the card sets, the manuals, the table yeah. game boards. Like I got a mass of stuff that is just- I know like, you do. That you just experienced, it just keeps going, right? So- Yeah. Um, yes. I, I just you want to put to something for it. I'd like to put something forward here. What, he, in sure. terms. He wants to put something forward. So I, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Like this sort of came in in terms of a, if you really want to look at using the hub factor as a methodology to bring teams together, there's so many different ways to do this. Right. But if we want to build a shared knowledge community, there's, there's a distinct set of teams to be built. And so I'm just putting forward this. If you want to write this down, because I see like, let's say four facilitators, if Kaylee's coming in as the fourth, which I think is a, is a good move because yeah. you need someone in, in the younger side kind of sense. Yeah. Yeah. And so remember the four of you, and then each of you facilitates three teams. This is, oh. this is as a minimum. So I'll give you the, 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 the three teams for one group is the marketers, the artists, the, the marketers, the artists, and the entrepreneurs. Oh my goodness. The next one are the planetary guardians, the originators, and the tech and the tech gurus. The next one is the teachers. Sorry, I missed the first. Yeah, you're going too fast. Okay, so marketers, arts, and entrepreneurs. Yeah. yeah. And then what was the then next? Then planetary one? guardians. Okay. Originators. And tech gurus, okay. and then teachers, healers, and mediators, and then facilitators, elders, and youth. Yeah, so that's that share knowledge map. Yeah. So basically, then you would set aside a time each week. You could actually fill the hub. It depends, like, if you, like you're, you're aiming at weekly meetings where this place is just, yeah. everything is full, right? Everything is full. Oh my so God. Come, up, exactly. come up with a weekly schedule okay. using this format, and each of you choose one of the three teams as being the prime facilitator. Oh, my God. 
And then that becomes the design, what you're aiming at to fill, like your goal the next year is get 144 people, 12 people meeting weekly as a mastermind. And once that happens, that's going to rock the world. You will rock the world. We will. So that was my question today was how can I, what steps do I need to take to take this to 144 people and create the shared knowledge community? (laughs) (laughs) And you notice I don't have a pen in my hand. I am just so mesmerized in listening. (laughs) Well, you also got two ladies who are very good at taking notes. (laughs) Oh, they're amazing. And, And Elijah, another thing that like Chrissy mentioned this, so we're at a table, like originally, the ladies thought we could just sit at other tables and not crowd around that table. And on the weekend, I was just, something kept coming up in me. No, we need to be around that table. That's the purpose. Yeah. So Christy mentioned putting one on the floor here in the front part of the hub and have it right on the floor and you can stand around it or you can pull up a chair and sit at the spot. Well, that'd be kind of cool. I know, but a lot bigger. So way it, bigger. You know, because those yeah. spaces are kind of tiny. Yeah. And so yeah. right now with everything it's causing us to reevaluate, but um, oh you would just well, you would get I would it say, and you send it to the guy who does it. I would I would say find one of the men, give him an assignment to create the knights of the round table and build oh. a beautiful tw- and that's the hub, like make it way bigger. So it can actually sit well. So it's in the front. And so people are walking, you're walked by traffic. Everyone's going to want to sit at that table. You want to get some real nice curtains in the front so you can close your window off. You want to make it sacred, right? You want to get more and more sort of like big velvet curtains that just, you know, yeah. that, that like like gorgeous purple or something, you know, like yeah. the whole thing gets, yeah. go, to, go to a theater. Go to some ex theater and ask them for curtains that, that used to be. Uh, it's oh, one of the most important that. things you can get there. And then, yeah, then, then find find some carpenter who just wants, you know, you probably know 10 guys out there who, who want to build this and get them together on a team and have them create something gorgeous. What's the challenge out there? Yeah. With a team. Yeah. Like what, what carpenter out there doesn't want to build, you know, the, the Knights of the Round Table, like. Oh my goodness. Like, and make it gorgeous. Like if, if you're going to invest, like this is something to invest in. Oh, you know, Elijah, once you come down here too, and you actually walk through the whole space, like when Elijah was here years ago, he, he was downstairs because we did everything down in my suite. And then he had his own space in the back there. Um, once you come down and you see the old yoga studio, because it's got a little office off to the side of it. The girl there is a happiness coach. Right. We would be moving her to the old learning center upstairs once we are here and we can use all that space. Okay. Because that all goes together and she knows that. So right. up there too would be an amazing spot to have a map on the floor. That could be the night it's nice at the round table up there. Could be both. I mean, oh. essentially what you're looking at are conversational zones. And as you get yeah. more and more people coming, oh. you're going to have more yeah. and more tables set up. So you'll go from like, eight or you you could have three tables each facilitated having like 36 people at once like like just think about you're thinking configurations of people during time schedules trade charging certain amounts but this thing about the the main thing is when you have these 144 people like this is this is going to create you know you know you're the hub for creating a new paradigm business structure that doesn't exist right now on the planet so that's the vision the deeper vision is is your create you know you know that you're co-creating something that we don't even know how it's going to be but basically you're going to be selling the idea that everyone of the 144 is going to help everyone of the 144 make their ideal job make their minimum like everyone's getting a minimum hundred dollars per hour right that's right. the minimum wage yeah. Not not like 17, like the minimum way. And believe me, keep that like you guys got to be a little bit discerning in a sense of, you know, you want to attract the people that are really you know into it and just kind of, you know, keep away the people that, you know, aren't ready. Like in a right. sense of they come in, they kick the tires, they move around. They don't really want to open up. They don't really want to do anything. And if anything, yeah. they're chaotic attractors. And you, as a facilitator, yeah. you're going to notice this. And this is a big thing about, you know, you want the people that are ready and willing and wanting to be there. Yeah. And ready, willing, and wanting. 
And the ones yeah, who are on the fence, you push them a bit to see which way they want to go. But it's better to get them out in a sense that they don't don't invite them or if, if they're, they're if they're the unsure, fence. you know, just say, you know, this probably isn't for you right now. We're a little booked. Uh, you, you know, you, you're really gatekeepers, right? You're gatekeepers for creating the vibe in the in the spot. And I'll reiterate, mm -hmm. music, music is huge. Get a good sound yeah. system you know and utilize music as a very important part of what you're doing to so, create the vibe. Yeah. Yeah. So the tech stuff, like all that stuff, I said, I need an afternoon here because I just need to get us all set up because that's what I used to do. So I'm like, it's not hard, but we just need to do it so it's really easy and put those yeah. things in place. Yeah. Because at some point you have like, let's say, uh, a seven to nine uh, session and then like two hours after mingling and that's the party that's the vibe that's the give a place to, go, to hang out and, and, and everyone's invited like all the people that you know you have parties once a week like doing something yeah. as soon yeah. as you can you get that the vibe yep rather than the party i like the vibe better than the party because it's this whole new way of looking at everything and this party isn't about a bunch of drinking no. and crap like that it's a vibe that's being created can you and not see it it's like a ripple when you effect said that i can see it yeah, like me I, too. I, I get pictures of stuff me so too. i can i can just i can see it mm -hmm. so so elijah we're gonna have a quick bite to eat okay and then prepare and get our table and everything ready for our next session at two okay did you want are you gonna be on that session no i, I i'll you guys do that one on your own um okay. i would just suggest you don't have to like the most, the thing you want to get them doing is get them involved in the process almost as quickly as possible in a good state. Yeah. And it's, yeah. and it's just like, sometimes like I, I generally don't try to teach a lot. I don't try to really sell you. It's just, just like, get them ready, get them sitting down, get them going. And once they're in there, they're engaged. And so as okay. a facilitator, the less you're talking, the better, the more you're just okay. guiding and you're just, you, you're doing okay. the timing thing. Okay. And just Perfect. remember to keep the vibe, like in your hearts and in your mind, the four of you or whoever's there, there's just always this kind of like that underneath foundational vibe is what raises the energy up in the people and gets them into their kind of yeah. like, gets them more yeah. into their their higher vibe. And then they, they usually they're gonna be going through a block, right? Like the, the spell is just a way for them to kind of see something different and and they're going through something. So it is very transformative right. and you just got to understand okay. that. Yeah, yeah, it is. And it's okay. okay. And really yeah. honor that. Yeah, really honor that. Okay, awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Elijah. Thank you. Yeah. So great. I, just congratulations. I'm going to send you a little congratulations video I was thinking of. Aww. But you guys did great. It was a huge uh, sort of like you. milestone and you guys should have a big celebration about it. You guys did great. We are. Oh, thank you, Elijah. Thank you. Thank you. See you later. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Bye.